Okay, um, it's been a crazy, crazy day. I'm in New Jersey, about 20 minutes away from Newark Airport, and I just parked my car here, and I'm waiting for an Uber to come take me to the actual airport. I'm about to get on a plane to Baghdad, Iraq via Turkey. It's my first time heading over there, and I'm going with a dear friend of mine and a very special person, Mr. Lipa Schmelzer, who is a famous Hasidic superstar. Um, it's a long story, I'm gonna explain more later. I'm a little bit too nervous right now, but I'm just gonna get into the Uber and get on the way. Okay, so I'm at the airport. It's an hour and 19 minutes before the flight. Lipa's not answering his phone. I wonder what, how this is gonna work out. It seems like Lipa got here already and he's checked in. So I guess I'll meet him a little bit later. 15 minutes, five zero minutes before the flight. I tried going through security and the TSA did not allow me through because they said my name was spelled wrong. I need to get a new ticket. I'm at check-in again and the agents are working to try to figure it out. So uh, hopefully we make this flight. I am drenched in sweat. I'm at the gate waiting to board the flight. The craziest things happened. First, my ticket wasn't good. They had to change the name. They changed the name twice. TSA wouldn't accept it. They had to call the manager. The manager did it. Then I went through security. I have all this electronics, my microphones and cameras. They made me go through again. They put it through again because they wanted to check my cameras again. Finally, I get to the gate area. I realize I'm in the entirely wrong gate area. I have to go out, back, to the check-in area, go walk further down, get into another TSA checkpoint on a whole different side of the airport, and I went through, and I was sure I missed the flight, and I got here, and uh, they're still boarding and almost no one's on the flight yet. Thank God, thank you, Hashem. Okay, so I'm here now with Lipa at the gate. Yeah, it's beautiful. He says we're going to change our perception of Iraq because I'm so afraid, to be honest. He's testing my belief in God because I have to be strong and believe in human beings that one day we'll all be at peace and we're taking the plunge to go, taking the leap of faith. And uh, yeah, he almost missed it by uh, spelling mistake and this and that, but we're finally here. And uh, we're, taking, we're enjoying the ride. We're, we're taking it, whatever it takes us. 100% and this is going to be an amazing trip. We're going to be safe. We're going to be happy. We're going to be healthy. We're going to make amazing meaningful content. We're going to change the world together. Thank you so much. So this is the kosher business class meal. Comes with a very cute sign here. You're hungry. I'm kosher. We're eating dinner. I gave away my cake. I guess I'm generous to him, and I'm generous to my body, and I'm eating uh, this little healthy for us. Yeah. So I'm very proud of Lipo that he actually got on this flight, because last night he had a little bit of an incident. He decided uh, not to come, but he changed his mind at the end, and I think, I think he made the right decision. I'll let you know on the way back. <laughs> Okay, so it's almost the end of our flight. Um, we've been on the plane for about close to eight hours now. So we're gonna be landing in Istanbul soon. Thank God I got an amazing uh, about four hour nap and Lipa got some sleep too. He is working on uh, learning how to use some of his musical gadgets so that he can produce some music on the go while he's traveling. And we're gonna do some writing. I'm gonna go to that. Anything to say? Yeah, um, I have fear, but uh, I'm going to try to persevere because things can happen anywhere and things can be safe anywhere. There is uh, something to, to, to think about when you go to a place where there's more danger than others. You can't just be uh, reckless. But uh, no pain, no gain. There's a, there's a risk in it and I think we're doing a mission to uh, uncover colorful cultures that uh, was buried for so long. So I've been praying and saying psalms to Helen because I promised God that if I make this flight I'm going to say the whole book today. Um, it takes about two hours to say it. And Lipa is drawing, sketching. That's you saying uh, to them, and that's me having fear. You know, overcome it. Okay, so we're in the lounge in Istanbul. 
We landed about an hour ago. I'm going to be praying uh, morning prayers here. And uh, soon we're off to Baghdad. Okay, so we just finished praying. We're going to try to get a shower or something to change clothing a little bit because I can't wear my Hasidic Jewish clothing in Baghdad. And uh, our next flight is in about an hour and a half. Now we're in the uh, Turkish Airlines lounge in Istanbul. This place is next level. Largest uh, private bathroom slash shower I've ever seen in an airport. Look at this. Okay, so I just finished my shower and I'm like a new person. Now comes the fun part. I need to get rid of these and my skull cap and my fringes because uh, I cannot walk around Baghdad like that and I can't even be on the plane like that. Okay, so we're at the airport in Istanbul, about to go to Baghdad. Lipa, this is the last chance to chicken out before we get on the flight. No, it's not my last chance and it's not a chance to chicken out because once I took the plunge and I said, you know what, I'm going to jump into it. There's no way, there's no way of backing out. I always I tell my friends that some, most people, they say, I'm not afraid of anything, but then when something comes, they go crazy. I try to be afraid beforehand and to get in my imagination the whole picture and all the case scenarios, I don't want to say all the case scenarios, but if I'm honest with you, I did think of all the case scenarios and I made a decision to come. And that's for me at this moment the right thing. And uh, hopefully we'll be safe, we'll return safe, and it's gonna be an amazing story. So you sure you want to do this? Absolutely. Let's do it, yalla. But first, a word from our sponsor. Mint Capital is a residential mortgage brokerage firm. We focus on brokering loans for one to four families, primary residents, investment properties, second homes, purchases, refinances, cash out refinances. We give the speed and ease experience for the client. It just moves along so quick. All you need to do is sign. Here we go, we just got served a coach meal in the flight to Baghdad. It's awesome. Good thing. Okay, so we just arrived in Baghdad. So here is a replica of the Ishtar Gate, an old Babylonian thing. It's actually, it's it's not as hot as I was expecting it to be. Love this gate. The Ishtar Gate. This is a replica of a Babylonian, uh, what would you, like arch. So we're here at the Tigris River and uh, Lipa very much wanted to come here to work on his project, which we're, we're going to talk about his project when we get to the hotel. But he came here and he composed a beautiful song on the spot. I'm talking a little bit quiet because he's an American and also the word where I come from, the culture, uh, the security told me not to say it to anybody like, yeah, my nationality. Um, my nationality is, is USA, but I'm talking a little bit quiet and I'm looking around like an unconfident person. But I want to tell you that every stone here in this place, every stone will tell you the story of the history of our people, the Jewish people. The Talmud was written here. Talmud, that's why it's named Talmud Bavli, by the, by, the, by the Babylonian sages of ours. And I'm writing now songs about it, and that's why I risked my life to come here. I had canceled the trip, made a decision to come back, but I want to say that every stone can tell you the story of our people, but every human being here will deny the story of our people. And it's a shame. I wish I would have the power to change the world. Not to point fingers on this type of person, that type of person. Just to be a human being. Just to be together. You know, to show love and compassion to one another. And every minute I'm here is a miracle. But nothing should happen to me, but you know what? Every minute of my life is a miracle. I was trying to come Okay, so we just arrived at the hotel. We're outside and security is going to be letting us in very shortly. Okay, so we're finally in the hotel. Um, I have a lot to tell you from when we landed in Baghdad until we got to the hotel. So basically, we landed in Baghdad, we immediately got off the plane. The airport is like kind of old. 
um, at least the, the terminal that we saw. And there was really good air conditioning in the jetway, in the ramp going from the plane to the terminal. The second we got into the terminal, it got really, really hot. And it got hotter and hotter every minute. I told Lipa, I feel like I'm in a slow cooker. I keep, you know, getting hotter and hotter. Um, we went to passport control and they sent us away. They told us to go to a special visa counter. We went to the visa counter and we had to hand in our passports. And then they made us wait for like a half hour until everyone else was processed. And we were like the only two people left in the terminal. And then some guy came over to us and he was like, $77 from each of you. So we just gave him cash. And a minute later we had our visas. Then we went back to the passport control and they allowed us through. Then we had to go through customs. We had to put all our bags through a uh, baggage scanner. Then outside we met our guide and our driver. They drove us to the hotel. On the way we passed uh, the exact location where Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian uh, Al-Quds Force General, was assassinated by the United States in the in January of 2020. Uh, there's a big mural of Qasem Soleimani and it says we will not forget the blood of our martyrs. This is the exact spot where they killed Qasem Soleimani. Wow, look, this is literally the shrapnel hit the wall. He was assassinated right here. I don't see anything. That car, that car. Oh, that is his car? Uh, yeah. No way. Yeah. That's Qasem Soleimani's car out there. You can't really see much, but... A sculpture. And there he is. Here is the crime of American terrorists. Terrorism. Yeah. These people were with him? Yeah. Wow. So that was pretty crazy. We passed by and there's literally, you can see shrapnel marks on the wall. And there was his car all blown up and mangled on, on display. And it says, we will never forget the blood of our martyrs. So pretty like, uh, pretty intense stuff and historical stuff that we saw. And then, finally, on the way to the hotel, our guide... <laughs> This is really crazy. I can't believe this happened. Um, our guide pointed out that they were, we literally saw like shells or missiles being fired into the air. And I was like, are we safe? And it's like, yeah, they usually don't land here. And I was like, oh my gosh. I've never seen live fire before like that. Heavy artillery. Uh, turns out that there was a drone that was threatening uh, U.S. military interests and they shot it down. We literally saw it happen. And I checked now, I see it's in the news, and someone sent me a video of it happening, so it's pretty crazy that we saw that. I definitely did not feel safe when that was going on. But uh, thank God we arrived at the hotel. The hotel is beautiful, um, especially the lobby areas. A lot of cool stuff that I'm going to show you guys in the morning. Lipa's choosing a room on the high floor so he can go out on the river. You want to talk, explain what you want to do? Yeah, I want to be here on the river. I want to paint a little bit. I want to take some pebbles, stones. I want to hold it, I want to touch it, I want to feel it, I want to talk to it, I want to hear back, I want to be silent and just listen to the water, and the water should help tell me the stories of the past, the pain of the past, the flourishing of the past, the beauty of the past, the sadness of the past, the, the, the toy of the past, and, uh, and uh, I want to connect, I want to connect to the, to the universe from Bovel, from the Babylonian times, until today and everything in between. Okay, so we're just uh, eating dinner. It's after 2 a.m. And we have to get a little bit of... I have to get some rest. I don't think Lipa's going to sleep. Lipa's just going to rock it out all night to make art. And then at 9 in the morning, we're going out again and we're going to see what we came to see. So it's like 4.30 in the morning. I was in my room uh, taking care of some emails and stuff. And beautiful Sigurds River. It's getting light outside. The sun is going to come up soon. I still didn't even go to bed. I have to jump into bed for a couple of hours so I have some energy for tomorrow. I'm very tired. So I'm going to get to bed. Um, this is the room. Sorry about the mess, two beds, there's a little mini fridge over there, and this is the bathroom. Very nice, happy with the hotel, the AC works well. Today's going to be a really hot day, over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyway, that's that, have a good night or good morning.
and we'll see you soon.